In this video, we're going to go ahead and make us a dirt with a lot of steel and some copper. First, we're going to clean this steel off. It's ADC RV2 and 15N20. We used about 16 layers of this, so uh, it took a little while. I'm only going to show you a little bit of the stuff that we that I did, just kind of the highlights. Clean it up in some acetone. Now that it's clean, let's go ahead and weld her up. Uh, try to hide the sarks from you so that you didn't get blinded or anything. Dip in a little bit of kerosene just before we put it into the forge. Helps to burn out any oxygen between the layers, supposedly. Now that the forge is hot, in it goes. Get her up to temperature, we're going to go ahead and set those welds with a press. You can see just a little bit of that steam coming off of that. not actually steam, by the way. Now that the welds are set between the layers, we're going to go ahead and cut that electric weld from the MIG welder off. That keeps us from having any mild steel in the billet once we get everything drawn onto the link that we want. Now that we've got those welds off, let's go ahead and draw this thing out to a good length. That way we can cut it into several pieces and restack it and start again. But before we do that, let's let it cool down a little bit beforehand. It has been a little while since I actually did this. I believe I cut these into 6 inch long chunks. Clean off all that scale of the hard stuff before we actually end up cleaning uh, both sides. I only do this for the pieces that are actually in the center. The outside layers, I don't bother with because they're just going to get reheated and then forged again anyway. So, it makes no difference. I'm just going to restack them after we clean those pieces up for welding again. For some reason, this billet decided it wanted to fight me pretty much the whole way, at least when I was putting it together in the clamp. More welding, just to put the billet back together. Again, these are temporary and will get cut off later. And now that it's back together, back in the kerosene. Now because we've actually cut these down a little bit smaller, I think the original pieces were 8 inches and these are 6, so it looks a little smaller, but the layer count does go up significantly. One of the biggest challenges I have while I'm using this press is a lot of the flux and other stuff that's in the actual forge, the slag and whatnot, tends to stick to it. So I ended up having to spend a lot of time cleaning each uh, go around off all the heavy scale and excess that usually sticks to it. What I didn't show you was the cutting over those weld welds off before I did that, but you've seen that. So now we're going to let it cool off, and we're going to go ahead and do something different. We're going to cut some grooves in it so that it looks like a ladder. This is traditionally known as ladder and pattern Damascus. Basically, it takes a lot of time. We cut these little grooves as close as we can together, and it really does make a nice contrast to the overall end piece that you're making. Here you can see those cuts that we just made, and I really what I'm doing is I'm trying to get them kind of smashed back out with the press and make them look a little bit more even. And then that's the end result of the whole thing, where you can't really tell where the uh, grind marks were in, but we're just cutting that scale off and cleaning the steel up. Now that it's all cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and cut the copper up into pieces that will fit right here. Uh, I'm not sure this was the safest way to do that. Here's the core. It's currently a quarter inch thick by two inches wide. Uh, it's, it needs to come down a little bit. So I flattened it out with the press and now I'm just cleaning it off. So again, here's the core still. And I tried to get this as close to the actual length or closer to the actual length. Um, clean it off with some acetone and get it prepped for welding again. We're going to go ahead and weld this thing up. A little bit different though, we have to go all the way around the outside. And of course I didn't get the entire process of drawing it out, but you get the idea. It's the same kind of thing. 
And here you kind of get an idea what the blade's going to look like in shape. And of course I got a little ahead of the game, forgot to do the beveling, but here's the quench! Now right as this comes out, you can see that copper kind of stand out against everything else. See, see, see? Right there. Now that it's all heat treated, I cleaned off some of the excess scale from the outside and I brought the knife inside and set it to 400 degrees on the inside oven and don't tell my wife I used the inside oven. To save you the pain of watching me do a lot of hand sanding, I skipped that part, went all the way to 2000 grit, and then went straight to the edge. What I have here is just glass cleaner and that ammonia will neutralize the acid that I used to etch the blade. This is the final go around with sandpaper to get all the high points off and you can really see that copper start to come through with the actual Damascus on the outside. Okay, don't stress out. This is not the knife. Actually, I'm making the guard. So, use the piece that I had extra from the original billet and some additional copper just to make the bolster look, just kind of stand out a bit. I found a little trick that actually helps out quite a bit with sanding things flat. Uh, and I just take a little bit of tape and stick it to my hand and then off we go to the sanding. I will say that I only flattened one side and then what I wanted to do is add some texturing once I got the that top piece of copper fitted to the actual blade itself. I'm using ironwood in my lathe here to actually hog out a lot of the material that's not going to be needed and you'll see here a while when we get to the actual handle itself. Here I'm doing just a little bit more shaping of that center bolster piece. Now I carefully put a lot of epoxy everywhere on this thing, on the inside, on the top pieces. It was a mess. Now that the epoxy is cured, we're going to go ahead and start shaping the bolster and the last bit of the handle itself because it's kind of square right now. This knife is actually going to a fellow marine and so I wanted to give it that kind of a k-bar look at least on one end of it before it tapered down into the actual blade itself. And I used tongue oil for the finish for the handle. Tongue oil tends to take quite a bit of time and a little bit of heat to actually cure itself and so here I am with a little space here in a small closet and uh, make sure you have a fire extinguisher on hand if you decide you want to do this. You know, just in case. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting on the stencil for my maker's mark. And I use a little electric uh, etching machine. Got it on Amazon. It's not super expensive. And the results actually are pretty good, I think. See? Now a little final cleanup and admiration. As we just kind of make sure that it's got no blemishes. I put a little carnauba wax on the outside to just kind of seal it a little bit. And it actually gives a nice shine. And there you have it. I really like how the pattern in the Damascus and the striations from the copper came out. The handle came out amazing. I was really happy with that. Thanks for sticking to the end watching this video. I really appreciate it. Leave me a comment if you want, and I'll see you next time.